Good morning. I'm glad you could take some time to devote to worship. And uh, I don't have any announcements for this Sunday, so we're going to start just by going directly into the reading of Scripture. We are finishing up reading 1 Thessalonians, and so we're going to read a chunk of chapter 4 and then the end of chapter 5 this morning. Finally, brothers and sisters, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you learn from us how you ought to live and please God as, as in fact you are doing, you should do so more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from fornication, that each of you know how to control your own body in holiness and honor, not with lustful passion like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one wrong or exploit a brother or sister in this matter, because the Lord is an avenger in all these things, just as we have already told you beforehand and solemnly warned you. For God did not call us to impurity, but in holiness. Therefore, whoever rejects this rejects not human authority, but God, who also gives his Holy Spirit to you. Now concerning love of the brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anyone write to you. For you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another, and indeed you do love all the brothers and sisters throughout Macedonia. But we urge you, beloved, to do so more and more, to aspire to live quietly, to mind your own affairs, and to work with your own hands as we directed you, so that you may behave properly towards outsiders and be dependent on no one. Then in chapter 5, we appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you. Esteem them highly in love because of their work. Be at peace amongst yourselves. We urge you, beloved, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. May your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Beloved, pray for us. Greet all the brothers and sisters with a holy kiss. I solemnly command you by the Lord that this letter be read to all of them. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Euchre is the game of choice in my family when we get together and play cards. A rather fast-moving game. You're dealt five cards and uh, the teams, two teams of two. You sit across from each other. And so it uh, can get pretty interesting how it unfolds. It is a game that is ripe for rehashing, repeating what has just happened. And there are some in my family who greatly enjoy rehashing and go over, going over what happened, why it happened, how it could have happened differently. And uh, there's others in my family who do not enjoy the repetition, and the comment will be made, are we rehashing now? Uh, it's sort of a subtle hint. Time to move on, play the next hand. Little do those family members know that when my children are old enough to uh, play that they will love to rehash. I it's going to be interesting, right? What's the point of going over things again and again? What's the point of repeating ourselves? What's the point of doing this the same thing, right? This is something that Paul addresses when he brings up uh, repetition to the church at Thessalonica. And instead of being annoyed at repetition and rehashing, he actually encourages it. He encourages it, and he asks his church to go over things that they have gone over previously. He, he starts out this last part of, of his letter by uh, telling them, uh, finally, brothers and sisters, we request and exhort you in the Lord Jesus, 
that as you receive from us instruction as how you ought to walk and please God as you actually do, that you excel still more. Right? As Paul starts to lay it out, the, way, the reason that you rehash, the reason that you repeat is so that you can excel, that you can go over and learn from what you've done and so you might continue to excel even more. Now that's Paul's argument. Right? This is a letter that he writes to a church that he has already praised at length. It is, he, Paul is not at all saying you need to start. What Paul is saying is you need to continue to excel and the way for them to excel, as Paul lays it out, is for them to continue to attend to the basics, to do the things you already know to do. Paul gives them a list, reminding them. He tells them, I'm going to go over the things we've gone over before. Why is it this list? We don't know. We don't know uh, why it was these particular things that Paul points out. He points out to them to the continued need to honor and respect the importance of sex, to treat yourself well, including both your body and your soul, to treat your family well, whether it is your family at home or your church family. Right? Do this as people who are becoming like Jesus, people who are becoming more beautiful inside and outside, and by doing so, repeating and refining what you already know to do. That, that's how Paul lays out his argument. Right? He gives them this list of things, and it might be that when I repeat preaching on this chapter and come back to it some, at some point in the future, that I'll try to figure out why this list and why, why this moment. At this point, though, as we begin this season of Lent, it seems to really be important to lean into the nature of repetition. Why do we repeat? Why do we repeat and rehash what we have done before? Why do we repeat uh, the same thing? Reading about repeating yourself, like what, what do you rehash, what do you repeat? It, it, it led me to think of something that I have repeated often. Right? There is a dish that I have cooked probably more often than any other dish in my life. And that dish is pretty simple. Take some chicken, cook it in some sauce, toss it on some rice. I have been cooking that theme and variation of that dish 20, 25 years now. I've been doing, I've done it beyond count, right? And at first I learned how to do that. And at first it was just making sure I didn't burn the rice and making sure I got the chicken cooked all the way through. Right, that, that's, and then I repeated myself. I did it again. And, and then o over time, I repeated and learned if you um, defrost the chicken just a little bit so it's still kind of firm, you can get it sliced a lot thinner. And then you have a higher ratio of surface area to sauce. And that's tastier. But then that led me to really kind of lean into, uh, as I cooked it more, to think about how sharp are my knives. Can't get a, a thin slice of chicken if I don't have a really sharp knife. So I started to learn how to sharpen my knives and kept on cooking this dish. And uh, I learned uh, to, as I rep repeated myself, I learned to keep a little squeezy bottle of water right there because so I could deglaze the, uh, deglaze, it's the fancy cooking term for throw some water in the bottom of it and get the crunchy bits up. That's where all the taste is, right? And so I learned to deglaze the chicken, deglaze the pan as I went. And, and then uh, still cooking the same chicken on rice, I picked up a rice cooker and I started cooking my rice in, in broth and chicken broth or in other spices so that I had it spicy. The chicken was flavored and the rice was flavored. And then I could start cooking other things with the rice in the rice cooker. And um, came across the practice of using really high heat and cooking your chicken in batches. So I got a, 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 a cast steel skillet that, that's like, kind of like a wok and I can cook uh, small batches of chicken at really high heat and, and it, it, it changes the tech. I have been cooking the same chicken and rice for over 20 years now. And I keep on repeating it and I keep on finding something else to work on, something else to excel at. And I gotta tell you that if I make you chicken and rice now, it's a lot tastier than it was 20 years ago. <laughs> it was good then, it's a lot better now, right? It, it matters to me that what I serve to my friends and to my family, I wanna be able to serve them something tasty. And, and so I continue to work on this year after year. 
Paul encourages the followers of Jesus to repeat themselves in the same way, for the same reason. You do the same thing again and again so that you become ever more beautiful on the outside and on the inside. That's how Paul puts it. Keep loving each other, refining how you love, improving how you love. It's not that you're, you need to start loving. It's that it's time to refine and improve and to repeat and rehash so that you get more beautiful at how you do it. The term that Methodist Christians use to get at this idea, uh, one way to talk about it, is responsible grace. That's what Paul is getting at. We have been given these amazing gifts. All of us are given amazing gifts and talents and skills and passions, right? We have these amazing gifts. that They are God-given. And then we are responsible for using them well. To use them year after year, to excel at them, to refine them, to practice them. Right? I have been given gifts from the people in my family to the skills that I have, the resources I have access to, and to use them responsibly is important, and it takes practice and repetition. It, and just as Paul is pleased with the people of the church at Thessalonica, how, how they've done already, right, he invites them to take those same gifts, how they have learned to love each other already, and to refine them, improve them. And we are invited, as people who continue to follow Jesus, to do the same. It's not time to start something new. It's time to refine the things that we already do as people who follow Jesus. Paul makes that very clear, right? This is what we're going to do. Refine, repeat and refine. This is a very Lent-esque point that Paul makes. Like That's the season of the, the church year we're in. The Lent is this time to look at where we're going. Like, where are we headed? What type of person are we? And what type of person are we called to become as we follow Jesus? This is a season that might involve fasting for some, doing less of what is ugly. It's a season that may involve feasting on what is beautiful and healthy. And when it comes to choosing what it is that we're going to fast or feast from, has anyone here like hit Lent recent last couple of years and been surprised at what they realize they need to focus on? All right. I, it really hasn't happened to me. Like, I haven't, like, as I sit down, and I know Lent's occurring, I sit down and just kind of take stock of where I'm at. It, it doesn't happen that I, it hasn't happened that I sit down and think, oh, I need to do something entirely new, right? The things that I tend to rotate between, it's kind of a never-ending game of, of Andy playing whack-a-mole, right? Well, the things I tend to rotate between is looking at a better relationship between work and paying attention to my family, more time focused on God and, and exercising and eating better, rotating between those three things. I have been rotating between those three things for my adult life, right? And, and I could get depressed by saying, man, I'm getting tired of repeating, focusing on different aspects of those things. Or I could, with Paul, see that these are the things that matter most. And rep I repeat them year after year, so that I can get better at what matters most to me, to my family, to following God, right? These are the things that are most important. And so what are you repeating for Lent? What is it that matters, that matters so much that it's time to repeat and rehash and look at it again and excel even more? Is it being patient? Is it handling anger? Is it taking time to serve? Is it handling temptation? Whatever it is, it's good to take the time to repeat yourself. It's not anything new, and that's okay. In fact, that's good. I think it's important to hear what Paul says as we do this. Praising what we have already done, being excited for, what, for the way that we, ways that we will excel next. Knowing that what is next is going to be based upon that repetition. Right? We repeat what it is that matters, so that we might refine and improve how we follow Jesus, because that matters. Now, Paul could have wrapped up right there, but he did want to say one more thing to the church at Thessalonica, and I think we need to listen to it this morning as well. He wraps up the letter by taking a moment to encourage them to maintain their church family. Right? Look at the family. 
he goes through, he says, you know, you need to support your leaders. Don't overlook the problems that crop up. Don't, they're not gonna get better if they're ignored. So if someone's a freeloader, tell them that that needs to change. Encourage the people who are straggling. Reach out to those who are exhausted. Give them a hand to get on their feet again. Be patient with each other for each person has their own needs. Look out for the best in each other, doing what is best for each other as a church family. There's a connection here. The connection between repeating what matters so that we might continue to excel and having a community in which we might repeat and practice. Put bluntly, who am I gonna cook chicken for? Right? If I'm gonna repeat and practice, I'm gonna need to repeat for somebody. I'm not practicing cooking chicken just for myself. Like cooking, you know, this, 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 that's just not how it's going to work, right? I cook at my best when I'm cooking for someone else. That's when I innovate and change and try something, repeat myself, but try something better and new. We need that community as the base upon which to stand. It is a community that helps us see what is true and stand up for it. It is a community that is the place where we learn to forgive. It is the community that is the place that helps, helps us discern how to serve. Serving others can be a bit of a challenge. How do we serve others? Getting together and, and serving as a community is far more powerful, far more effective. Like we need this community. It's a community that can help us see the gifts that we have, encourage us to use them, help us repeat what matters, and cheer for us as it change, as our lives change. At the beginning of this video, as at the start, as there is at the start of many of my videos, there's a slide that thanks you for being here today and encourages you to make sure that you are part of a church family. And that's part of like this is why. Like how what Paul is laying out here is 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 what, how, why this matters so much. I'm excited for what God can do in and with you over time. I hope that you are taking part of your, yourself to refine and to repeat in this season of Lent. And I am absolutely certain that it's going to go best if you have a community to do it with. I, I hope you have that community. I hope that you are part of a community that strengthens and surrounds and prays and celebrates and eats with you because that's where this happens best let me end with how paul ends paul ha has talked about this that we repeat so that we might excel and that we have this church community that we lean on so that we have a place to practice and excel together and then he ends by saying may god himself the god who makes everything holy and whole make you holy and whole. May that God put you together, spirit, soul, and body, and keep you fit for the coming of our Master Jesus Christ. The one who has called you to this excellence is dependable. If he has called you to it, he will make it happen. Paul ends with this promise. That's, that's what Paul ends with. This promise that if, as we repeat what matters, we are placing ourselves before God, will bring that good work to its completion. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now let us pray. Heavenly Father, have patience with us as we repeat once more, as we engage once again with following your Son. Bless and guide us, giving us confidence that the good work will be completed because you are good. We give you thanks for the church that we have, for the community in which we practice, the opportunities we have to repeat together. We pray that this community may continue to be strong as we follow Paul's guidance to help and to serve each other. We pray for all the servants of this community who serve in all of the ways that make this community possible. We give thanks for such people as we give thanks for your son in whose name we pray. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. And as you go forth, I hope you go forth with a confidence that what you repeat is worth repeating. And God will take what we repeat and will use it to make us whole and holy. Amen.